Peace, grace, and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father and from our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We go to the small catechism and we look at the Eighth Commandment and its interpretation and we find from Father Luther always put the best construction on everything. So let's do that with our text. We have basically three people here. The first is Jesus. Let's put the best, well, how can we put the best construction on somebody who's perfect? Just simply say he is perfect in everything he says and does. He is perfect, period. And then there is Simon the Pharisee. Now, he was kind enough to invite Jesus to dinner. That's a good thing. The very fact that he invited him to eat is something because the Pharisee said, he even eats with sinners. So this Pharisee is saying, I don't call him a sinner. That's a good thing. Why did he invite him? Undoubtedly to learn something. Remember there was another Pharisee that wanted to learn something. His name was Nicodemus. But he came to Jesus by night for fear of the other Pharisees. So Simon was well out in the open. Another good thing. <coughs> the next person is the woman. One paraphrase I read last week said, she was a common prostitute of the streets. Now, that's pretty violent. So let's not look at her past, let's look at her present. If we want to put the best construction on her, we would say she is in deep repentance. It was not just by chance she happened to see Jesus and automatically became converted. Undoubtedly, she heard him preach. We need not assume that Nicodemus was the first person to ever hear John 3.16. But others had heard it, perhaps even thousands, and she was probably among them. Now, she knew who she was, a common woman of the streets. She was ashamed of herself, but she didn't know any way to get out of this terrible life. Everybody knew who she was. How was she going to change? But here came Jesus preaching the gospel in repentance. God is love. God is forgiveness. There is a way out. We look no further than to what Jesus said of her. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Now, there are three other characters in our text by way of the parable. The first is the money changer or the money lender. And the other two are the two men indebted to him. Looking at the money lender, we could say he had compassion, he forgave their debt. Looking at the two who were indebted, we can say of them, they were grateful for their forgiveness. But notice how Simon gives his answers. He said, I suppose the one who had a greater debt canceled. I suppose. Jesus, I know what you want me to say, and my experience says it's not always true. And you and I can identify with that because how many times have you, how many times have I, how many times have we helped people who showed no gratitude for it? How many times? The history of this congregation is filled with examples of people we have helped many different ways, especially financially, and where are they today? Most of them are gone. Many years ago, one of our members who left us, even though I was kind to him, invited him to lunch several times. I'm going to give you his name, Charles Cody. He left us and joined another church. He left this church and joined the church triumphant. The reason I bring him up, he gave me a book, opened up my understanding. It was written by a pastor, and he said in, in his congregation there came some trouble, and the people said, we want you to leave, and the president of the congregation said, stand up, all of you who want the pastor to leave, and he said, this one man stood up. And I had helped him so many times, so many ways, and especially financially, and he stood up. How could this be? The pastor finally reasoned, he felt inferior to me, 
And every time he saw me, he was reminded of his inferiority and my superiority. And he decided one of two things, either he was going to leave or I was going to leave. And so he stood up against me. We have seen this in this congregation. Now, let's break away from putting the best construction on Simon because Jesus said, you see this woman? I came into your house and you did not give me a kiss, but she has kissed me. You didn't wash my feet, but she washed my feet. You didn't give me any oil, but she poured ointment on my feet. Now here Jesus lists three things which were customary among the Jews. If we want to make it more modern, we would say we have a guest coming to our house and first of all we open the door and we invite them in. We don't let them just stand there. We ask them if they'd like to sit down and probably offer them a drink. If they're a Baptist, we'll give them tea. <laughs> if they're a real full blood of Lutheran, we'll give them beer. <laughs> If they are French descent, we'll give them wine. We'll do our best to make them feel welcome. And this is what Jesus was talking about. For whatever his reason, the Pharisee didn't do it. Now, this reminds me of Pilate's wife. You see, in, the, in our story here, the Jewish leaders didn't do what they were supposed to. The common person did. Why do I say Pilate's wife? Because she interceded for him at the trial of Jesus, you remember. She said, I had a dream, leave him alone. And then there's Pilate himself. What did he do? He washed his hands. That is from the Old Testament, which the leaders are supposed to do to show their innocence. That was a Jewish thing. And here the Roman pagan did it. And then at the cross, what was it? Not the scribes and the Pharisees who were there mocking Jesus, but the Roman centurion who hollered out, surely this was the Son of God. When he saw all these things taking place, pagans took over for the Jews. How did Luther put that? The good and gracious will of God is done indeed without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it might be done among us also. Now, Jesus used this parable and it needs to be interpreted. Who is the money lender? What is the debt? And who are these two men that are forgiven? Let's start with the debt. I believe the debt is sin. The wages of sin is death. And that's not a debt that you can repay. The two men in our parable were not able to repay. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sins, it must die. And we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Now, according to St. James, sin is sin. But the Bible also tells us that there are re degrees of rewards and there are degrees of punishment for the sinner. Who forgives sin? God. So God is the moneylender in this parable. Who are the two men? One is a gross sinner, and the other is a minor sinner. Murder, adultery, theft, gossip, gluttony, white lies. Terrible sins, which very few people do in the deepest sense. Minor sins, which a lot of people do all the time without even thinking about it. Now I qualify the two different kinds of sins, yet in the biblical sense, sin is sin. And we can go a lot deeper than that. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, we learn what Luther said, if we do not help and befriend our, body, our neighbor in his bodily need, it's the same as murder. Think of the priest of the Levite. The goal of the thieves who robbed that man was for him to die. The priest and the Levite walked by uh, aiding and abetting the thieves. They were partners to him. Jesus said, looking lustfully at another is the same as adultery in our hearts. Stealing isn't just taking money with a mask and a gun, but it's a whole lot more. For the employee, it is not giving eight hours worth of work for eight hours worth of pay. For the employer, it is not paying a person what he's worth. 
according to Malachi, who, by the way, quotes God, and some of you don't want to hear this, stealing, what's the rest of that? Is not bringing the full tithes into the Lord's house. Skipping public worship is stealing from God the honor and the glory that is due to Him. Not using your God-given talents is stealing from the person who needs your help. Not speaking up to tell the truth makes us a partner to the lie. You see, while a lot of denominations are all upset about smoking and drinking and movies and dances and makeup and jewelry and how to dress and whether or not a woman should cut her hair, they, and a lot of times we, forget the greater things. What are they? You shall love the Lord your God, how? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your being. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus got a little more strict on that. What did he say? A new commandment I give unto you, you shall love one another even as I have loved you. And then St. Paul says, forgive one another even as God in Christ has forgiven you. I want you to imagine something. You're very sorry for your sins. You ask God for forgiveness. And he says to you, your sins are forgiven, but I don't want to see you no more. Or your sins are forgiven, you can go to heaven, but stay away from me when you get up there. <laughs> Forgive one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Now when we understand this, and the Holy Spirit puts some weight on us and says, hey, that's you. And what can we say but, oh, most merciful God, I really and truly and deeply have sinned against you and others by thought, word, and deed. And if we have said this with a true and sincere heart, Jesus will say to us, the same as he said to the woman, your sins are forgiven, your faith has saved you, go in peace, amen.